What is up everybody? Today's Swift tutorial is gonna be all about refactoring your alerts. Now, we've all seen this boilerplate code, you know, throughout our view controllers. And the goal of this video is to help you remove all that boilerplate stuff out of review controllers and into a separate object uh, that you can use your alerts for. Now, there are many, many, many different ways that you can do this. I'm just gonna show you one today. So in the comments, uh, feel free to leave other uh, options. Like I know you can create extensions and maybe, you know, refactor this a different way. However you choose to do it, that doesn't matter to me. What I want, the goal of this video is for you to just remove all this boilerplate, you know, alert logic out of review controllers to clean those up a bit. All right, let's talk about how we're gonna do that. As always, let's start off with a quick run through of the starter project, just to give you some context as to what we're working with. As you can see in my simulator on the right, we have three buttons that just show the alerts that we're looking at, you know, invalid email, unable to retrieve data. And uh, now in my main storyboard, you can see I have my three buttons and I did style the buttons programmatically in an alert button uh, subclass. So you can see that's what's going on here where I set the, you know, the background color to red, give it a different font, you know, around the corners. Uh, so this is kind of like you know, what's called skeletal storyboards where the storyboard is just uh, super, super basic and clean and you kind of customize everything in code. That's how I typically use storyboards. I'm gonna have a video coming out about that soon, you know, more on that. Uh, that's not what this video is about, obviously, but just wanted to show you what's going on. And then I have my view controller here with all the cluttered alert uh, code that we are going to refactor out into its own object. So that's what we're working with, let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create our alert object. So for that, we just go up to our project, command N for a new file, make it a Swift file, go ahead and just call it alert, um, that's fine. Create, you can see down here I got my alert.swift. Uh, we are going to need UI kit, so go ahead and import uh, UI kit. And I'm gonna make mine a struct. We're gonna talk about it in a second as soon as I finish typing it. Uh, struct alert. All right. Now, because mine's gonna be simple, I'm gonna keep it a struct. But let's say you had, you know, a hundred different alerts in your app and you wanted to subclass them with like, you know, maybe these are login alerts or these are, you know, networking alerts, whatever. Um, then you might wanna make it a class so you could subclass that alert uh, to just compartmentalize things further. Uh, for this case, I'm just gonna keep it simple with the struct. So I'm gonna type out the method signature for our main function here, and we're gonna talk about the different ways we can use it in a bit, but let me type it out first. So static uh, func show basic alert on VC. I'll explain this here in a second. UI view controller uh, with title. Sorry about my typing. I have a giant mic in front of me, so it's kind of hard to type around that. Uh, message string and cool. So here is the function signature. Uh, just, I like to write it out like this for readability. So show basic alert on. So if you're not familiar with when there's like two parameter names, how this works. So the first one you see is gonna be what shows up when you actually call the method. Uh, and then this uh, parameter name is what you're gonna use actually in the scope of this function. So um, yeah, that's kind of what that is. So with title, uh, we need to pass in a string and a message. So now that I have this, let me just go ahead and, and copy over some code from here. I'm gonna type it again and we'll make this work here. So we're basically taking this alert code that we've used and is cluttering up our view controller. Uh, go ahead and copy it, bring it over to our, not our alert button, we want our alert Swift. Uh, and then just go ahead and paste it in here. Now we're gonna start replacing things with our parameters. So you see I have let alert equal, you know, UI alert controller title. Uh, instead of hard coding the string here, we're just gonna pass in our title parameter. And then same thing, instead of hard coding the message, we're just gonna pass in our message parameter. Uh, and then, uh, so alert, add action, this is us adding the okay button. Uh, again, if you want this to say something different, just type something different there. So now normally we just present this on the view controller, but our alert struct has no knowledge, uh, you know, of that view controller, but that's where we passed it in here, uh, the VC for the UI uh, view controller. So we'll just do vc.present, and that is going to show this alert controller. Now this is kind of just step one. I like to take it a step further, uh, but if you just did this, now you have a pretty flexible alert where you can just call show basic alert. Let's actually go back to my view controller here and do that. So let's just do uh, alert dot show basic alert on, we're gonna pass in self because we wanna present the alert on this view controller. And then now you can just pass in your, your string. I always do that in Swift 4, type that extra stuff. Uh, you know, my string message, my message. So now you have a flexible alert that you can pass in um, and pass in a title and a message basically anywhere in your code without all this boilerplate. Now, like I said, that's just step one. That is okay. 
Uh, I don't like just doing this um, because now I still have to type strings everywhere and I don't like seeing a lot of strings like all throughout my code. Just a, that's a personal thing. So I like to take this refactor a step further. Um, but again, this is one step that you can do that will be so much neater than this. However, you're still typing strings all over the place, which we're gonna um, fix. So going back to our alert object, uh, I'm gonna write another function here. Actually, I'm going to uh, make this private because I only want this accessible within my alert struct because I'm not going to use that, you know, flexible alert that I just showed you, even though that's okay. Uh, I'm going to choose not to use that. And again, personal preference. So I'm going to create more functions down here. Static func show incomplete form alert on uh, VC. And then again, that does take in a UI. Uh, I can't type <laughs> view controller. And then now I'm going to call uh, the, the func show basic alert here. So now I'm going to do uh, show basic alert and I'm just going to pass through the view controller that I pass here, VC with string. And then now here's where I'm going to hard code my strings. Incomplete form. And the message is please fill out all fields in the form. So now when I call this, if I go back to view controller.swift, instead of having these strings, you know, get rid of that. Now I can just do uh, alert dot show uh, incomplete form alert on self. That is because I want to show it on this thing. So now I've refactored all this code out into just alert dot show incomplete form alert on self. So there's two reasons why I like to take this a step further and write this extra function here that we talked about down here. And that is because one, this is very readable. If I want to show an alert, it just says alert show incomplete form alert on self. Like to me, that's very, very uh, readable and not cluttered up with all the strings and stuff. The other thing is if you noticed, and this will be more clear when I write the other ones real quick, uh, when I did alert dot, I get the autocomplete. And if I have all my alerts, I'm gonna get an autocomplete of all the alerts I want. Uh, a lot of times when you're making an app, you're going to uh, have many alerts that you use over and over again. For example, this incomplete form alert happens anytime, you know, a login screen, maybe a registration form. Uh, you can see where you would use this alert more than once. So uh, it's nice to just have it right there, call it on self and be good to go. So next we're gonna do the same thing with this, uh, you know, invalid email button tapped alert, but when we get down to this unable to retrieve data, there's a little twist in it. To, uh, as you can see, we're, you know, we're dispatching to the main uh, thread. So we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but let's go ahead and knock out our email button first. Uh, so if we go back to alert, again, it's just the same thing. Uh, static func show uh, invalid email alert on. And what do we wanna present it on? We wanna present it on our UI view controller. Whoops, don't need a space there. And then we're just calling our show basic at the top. So show basic alert on just passing through the view controller that we pass in and then uh, go ahead and type out what we want, you know, invalid email, you know, please use a correct email. Writing alert message is always the, the hardest part of development, I think. Um, so now if we go back to our view controller, again, this is just repetitive, I know, but I, I like to say re repetition is huge in programming and learning. So, but now you're, you're gonna see the, the list of alerts that I get. So, well, let me build first, it didn't quite catch up there. Uh, Alert.show, so now you see I get show incomplete form alert, show invalid email alert. And again, you can imagine if I had five or six of these, it'd just be real simple to see all my alerts within this dropdown. And I wanna present it on self, good to go. Now, down to this unable to retrieve data button. So in, in real life, this incomplete form alert, like we talked about, was on a login screen. Invalid email, also you can do on a login screen. There's no network call involved. However, unable to retrieve data button, like say there's a networking error, uh, you know, you're gonna have these type of alerts, you know, anytime you're dealing with network calls because you gotta handle the errors correctly. So um, because the networking is likely being done on the background thread, it should be done on the background thread, when you wanna present your alert, you wanna make sure you're coming back to the main thread to present the alert because you're updating your UI there. So that's where this dispatch uh, q.main.async comes in, where we present that. Now, so I like to just include this in my, my basic alert here. So uh, what I'll type here is just uh, dispatch q.main.async, and then go ahead and throw this in here. That way, all of my alerts are always going to be on the main thread, even though, you know, sometimes I may not need to do that. Um, it's just a good thing to just be sure of. Now, and if you are super particular in which ones you want to, uh, you know, present on the main thread first, then maybe you would rewrite this show basic alert as like show basic alert on main thread, and then you would include this dispatch q.main.async in that function and then you would write another function that is just the show basic alert that i had before if you wanted to differentiate which ones you uh, present on the main thread 
but because all UI should be updated on the main thread, I'm I'm fine with you know making sure all of them are on there. Uh, may not be necessary for all of them, but that's just what I do. So that is going to take care of you know this case static func uh, show unable to retrieve data alert on VC VC UI view controller. And then same thing, show basic alert, except now our basic alert includes the dispatch queue.main.async to bring it to the main thread on self uh, with, you know, unable to re retrieve data. And the message is, you know, network error. You could write a better error message, but we're just gonna do that to get the point here. Build that. Uh, okay, I passed in self out of habit. I need to pass through the view controller that I'm passing through here in the uh, function signature. No big deal. We all make those little mistakes. Go back to view controller and get rid of all this. And then again, just uh, alert dot show. And again, I get my list, unable to retrieve data alert on self. So again, this is why I really like doing this. It's just now you turn those alerts into just one line of code. It's very readable. And I'm sure you've seen where like you have this really long function and maybe like, you know, 10 to 12 lines of it are just your, you're showing your alert and it just clutters everything up, makes things hard to read and reason about. Uh, so again, I like refactoring that out, putting it onto one line. Let's go ahead and run it just to make sure that all works now. Yep, so incomplete form, tap that. Incomplete form, fill out all the fields. Invalid email, yep, there's that. And then unable to retrieve data, there you go. So that is just one way to refactor your alerts to make your code a little cleaner. Again, there are many ways to do this, and I just want you to refactor that out of your view controller. So hopefully you can clean up your code after this video. If you found this at all useful, go in and subscribe. I put out new videos all the time.